second video in two weeks. What's happening? A couple weeks ago, a company that I used to use for an online diary said that they were relaunching their website and that if I wanted to, I could reclaim my online diary. In my head, I was thinking this was my diary from when I was in college, but I went and I unlocked the diary and it was a diary from when I was first starting hormone replacement. I clearly did not finish writing in this diary because I didn't even know that the website had stopped working. Most of this is written in the fall of 2011 and the spring of 2012. There's so many different thoughts and so many different feelings and I kind of just wanted to share some of them. The first journal entry is me sort of starting the journal and telling my story. For the most part, I've already told my viewers my story and how I discovered, you know, what was different about me. It's just there's a couple of really interesting excerpts here. Yeah, after I found out that I couldn't that I was that I was sterile that I couldn't have children I didn't leave the house for almost a week I stayed out of school I was mad I was depressed I just wanted to be normal so even writing this and writing from this perspective I'm still thinking of myself as abnormal which I don't think of myself as abnormal anymore I'm just different writing this having only just started hormone replacement I'm I'm still thinking of something that's wrong with me and that's so interesting to me because I don't think there's anything wrong with me anymore. Like I've I've let go of that. And I know that everybody has to come to that in their own time, but I thought that was really interesting. I had friends, a life, a caring family. I was fine. Clearly I wasn't fine. Clearly this is this had been bothering me for so long. And I talk about the first the first doctor I went to visit right before starting HRT and he basically told me I have XY chromosomes and that was something that was never really explained properly to me as a teenager. And there's a part in here that is really interesting. I need to know that by December of next year, which would be 2012, I will no longer be in the dark. I will know what caused this, how I can make sure I stay healthy, and where can I find the support and a community of other people in the same position. Unfortunately, I can't even start on the ladder because I don't even have a real diagnosis yet. I was I was so convinced that, that that I had a condition, that I had a problem, that there's something wrong with me, that I was abnormal, and it it rings so true. Like there's so many different ways that we're raised in such a gender normative society. Like I wish I could go back to myself and tell myself it's going to be okay. It's going to take a few more years, not one year, like 3 or 4 more years for you to get your medical records for you to see the right kind of doctors, for you to talk to a counselor, for you to talk to people like you, for you to go to a conference where you're going to meet a bunch of other people like you. It hurts so much to read this. I was so sad and I was so angry. I'm only going to read from a few, but the next entry was like the first hopeful good thing that was coming from it. My boobs are growing. My boobs are definitely getting bigger. You know, I've been a double A since I was 19 years old. My boobs are getting bigger. I complained about how the patch isn't working for me and I don't understand why the patch doesn't work and how I'm having all these side effects and how I can't sleep on my stomach anymore because my boobs are growing. That was not the right HRT for me. You know, that was not the right situation for me. And it took another two years before I was on the right kind of HRT because I had so many other weird side effects. I mean, there was bleeding, there was pain, there was soreness, like everything was weird. And it takes finding the right balance for a doctor to be like, I'm gonna fix this. I'm just really super grateful for the for the doctors I eventually got to talk to. I'm 27 when I'm writing this and my body is finally changing. One of the next entries, building manager came to our apartment to explain some sort of construction that's happening. I don't remember meeting him. I think I would have remembered such a good looking guy. This may sound crazy, but I think I was making him nervous. Me, in my pajamas, hair falling out of a bobby pin, making him nervous. Am I already giving out pheromones? Are feminine wiles developing too? Did I not have these before? I need to put myself out there more. There's got to be a way to test these wiles. My body's already changing and I'm having weird pains and some days are weirder than others and some days are more sore than others, but I'm already starting to think about things differently and having sort of different confidence changes. Body confidence is a, is a lifelong journey. I was learning so much about myself that I was sort of learning how to like course correct behaviors and physical attributes. The last one that I wanted to throw out there was 
it, it was, it's a little bit scary. I can feel my priorities shifting. I've always craved adventure, but now I'm thinking of costs, practicality, schedules. This all sounds well and good, but what if I'm losing myself? I'm just, I'm sort of thinking about like, how is this affecting my emotions and my brain and my priorities? Am I starting to, am I starting to feel like more of an adult? The longer I've been on hormone replacement, the more mature and the more emotional I feel. I don't want to lose the things about myself that make me me. I have to hold on to all of it. I can't let it go. Like that's such a, that's such a serious thing. Like, you know, maybe I should have been talking to somebody. Maybe I felt like I was losing myself. Maybe I felt like the changes that were happening on the outside weren't, were also affecting me on the inside. I stopped the journal in March. I couldn't go back and write the story of what happened between 2012 and 2015 because there's periods where I'm just trying to focus on getting a job and there's periods where I'm moving from New York to New Jersey and back to New York again. And the worst parts are just the waiting and why don't I have my medical records yet? And why haven't they called me yet to give me this appointment? I didn't get upset. I didn't get emotional when I was rereading it. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna down load it as like an archive and I'm gonna hold on to it. I guess my question is to all the people out there who are just learning about their diagnosis or have been dealing with it for some time, do you keep a journal online, offline? You know, how long have you been keeping it? Obviously, whatever you're willing to share in the comments below, please share. But I think it's really important to like not keep these things bottled up whenever possible. And of course we have support and friends and family and hopefully people that we can talk to, but sometimes just saying things to a screen or just writing things out or just typing things out is best to be like, I also went through this. I was also an awkward teenager. This is the first time I had ever written about my body and being intersex. I didn't even use the word intersex in this entire journal. There's so much I didn't know and so much I, I had yet to experience and overcome that it's helpful really to look back and it's helpful to know how far I've come. Now I'm getting a little emotional because I'm like, I've come so far, it's such a magical thing. So share in the comments if you keep a journal and what your journey has been like, if you've seen a change from the, when you started the journal to now, or if you stopped the journal, why did you stop or something? I don't know, let's just, let's just continue this conversation in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.